What if I told you there's a train station so massive it could swallow entire airports? A place where trains glide beneath glass roofs the size of football fields and an entire city lives above them. Sounds impossible, right? Before I show you how this mind-bending megastation reshaped one of China's most complex cities, make sure to hit that subscribe button, because today, we're stepping into a world where transportation isn't just moving people, it's building civilizations. They say China builds at a scale the rest of the world struggles to imagine, but deep in the mist-veiled mountains of the country's southwest, one city has turned that ambition into something almost mythic. This is Chongqing. A megacity of over 30 million souls, where cliffs and rivers collide in a tangle of stone and steam. It's a city that seems to rise out of the Earth's crust itself, more vertical than horizontal, suspended between ancient geology and modern velocity. For centuries, its terrain made it nearly impenetrable. Roads had to cling to mountainsides, bridges had to leap across gorges, and life itself unfolded on multiple levels, as though gravity worked differently here. And then came the idea that would rewrite the city's destiny. Chongqing East Railway Station. Imagine a structure so vast it seems to defy proportion. 1.22 million square meters of glass and steel, stretching further than the eye can follow. It's larger than 170 football fields, more than five times the size of New York's Grand Central Terminal. The scale alone is staggering, but the ambition behind it is even greater. Inside, eight interconnected levels thrum with ceaseless motion. High-speed trains slice through the heart of the building. Metro lines crisscross beneath the surface. Above them, offices, hotels, and malls rise in an engineered harmony that feels almost organic, as if the city itself has grown a new organ. At full capacity, this station can move 16,000 passengers every hour but that number only hints at its true purpose. This isn't merely a point of transit. It's an experiment in urban anatomy. It doesn't just move people. It reorganizes space, time, and opportunity. As you stand beneath its massive canopy of steel ribs and filtered sunlight, you can feel the pulse of a new kind of civilization. The roar of engines become a kind of heartbeat. The platforms hum like arteries. You begin to realize this is not just infrastructure. It's identity. And one question echoes through the din of arrival boards and rolling suitcases. What happens when a train station becomes a city? Chongqing is a paradox, a city sculpted by nature's obstinacy and humanity's refusal to yield. It lies where the Yangtze and Jialing rivers converge, a place of mist and perpetual construction. Skyscrapers rise directly from cliff sides, connected by stairways and cable cars instead of open boulevards. Bridges arc over the water like steel ribbons, linking islands of concrete that seem to float in vapor. Its beauty is cinematic, a metropolis that appears half dream, half industrial machine. Yet for centuries, this beauty came at a cost. The geography that made Chongqing majestic also made it maddeningly difficult to reach. The mountains didn't just surround the city, they isolated it. Every road curled and doubled back. A route that appeared short on a map could become an expedition in reality. Even as the rest of China began to stitch itself together with high-speed rails and motorways, Chongqing remained a fortress of ridges and fog. Trains crawled in and out of the city through bottlenecks and tunnels that were never built for modern demand. Economic growth pressed against physical limits. So when China launched its National Rail Revolution, the 8 Vertical 8 Horizontal Network, Chongqing stood at a crossroads between opportunity and constraint. The city's leaders knew that without a new kind of gateway, the region would remain an island of potential. The solution demanded more than just concrete or steel. It required imagination strong enough to rewrite geography itself. And in 2019, that imagination took form. A project was announced that would quite literally carve through the mountains. A link that would drag Chongqing out of isolation and into the bloodstream of modern China. By the late 2010s, Chongqing was running out of room. The city's existing railway hubs, especially Chongqing North Station, were bursting at the seams. The platforms were packed day and night, trains arriving and departing in an endless claustrophobic rhythm. Passengers filled every corridor, every stairwell, trying to move faster than the geography would allow. 
It wasn't just inconvenience, it was a bottleneck threatening the city's role in the nation's future. Chongqing had become a vital node in China's expanding high-speed rail grid. The government's master plan envisioned eight major vertical and eight horizontal corridors connecting the entire country, from the frozen plains of Heilongjiang to the tropical coast of Hainan. But for that vision to work, the western interior, the part of China defined by its mountains, needed a powerful gateway. Chongqing was the natural choice. It sat at the heart of western China's economy, a megacity with industrial might, innovation hubs, and a strategic location between Sichuan and Hubei. Yet its infrastructure couldn't keep pace. The old stations were built for an era of slower trains and smaller ambitions. The problem wasn't temporary, it was structural. The city was suffocating under its own growth. Each year, millions more people flowed through Chongqing. Not just residents, but travelers, migrants, and entrepreneurs drawn by the promise of westward development. Something had to give. The planners knew expansion wasn't enough. They couldn't simply build another station. They needed an entire ecosystem. A living, breathing transit core that could unify high-speed trains, metro lines, buses, taxis, and even urban real estate into one synchronized organism. The project wouldn't just solve congestion, it would redefine urban design itself. Thus, the dream of Chongqing East Railway Station evolved, not as a building, but as a system. A transportation ecosystem. A machine for movement designed to fuse city and station into one seamless environment. It would be the largest of its kind ever attempted in China, and possibly in the world. In 2019, the official announcement was made. Chongqing would construct a new high-speed railway station in its eastern corridor. The plan was audacious. It would be the largest integrated transit hub in western China, a superstructure that would anchor an entirely new city district. Construction began in 2022, a feat of speed that mirrored the country's relentless engineering culture. In just 38 months, an army of workers, machines, and algorithms transformed a rugged patch of land into a technological marvel. When the doors opened, the figures were almost unreal. 15 platforms, 29 tracks, 8 massive levels stacked like floors of a vertical city. Every layer had purpose. High-speed rail, intercity connections, metro lines, parking decks, commercial towers, and civic plazas, all functioning as a single organism. The choreography of it all was breathtaking. High-speed trains arrived and departed within seconds of schedule. Metro lines connected passengers to every corner of the city. Above ground, buses and taxis circulated like blood cells in a living artery. The transition between systems was seamless, engineered down to the step. But what stunned visitors most was what surrounded it. The station wasn't built in isolation. Around it rose an entirely new urban core. Residential towers, office districts, cultural centers, and green spaces. The city didn't just add a station. It grew around one. Standing out Chongqing East, you no longer feel like you're on the edge of a transportation complex. You're standing in the middle of a living district, a hybrid of infrastructure and civilization. It's as if the architects had planted a seed of grass and steel, and an entire metropolis bloomed around it. This was no longer just public works. It was urban evolution in real time, a prototype for the cities of the future. But before the city could rise, the mountain had to be tamed. The terrain of Chongqing is notoriously unforgiving, a maze of steep ridges, deep ravines, and shifting soil. To create a flat foundation large enough for a structure over a million square meters, engineers had to cut and stabilize the land on a scale rarely attempted in modern architecture. Summer heat often climbed past 40 degrees Celsius, turning the site into a cauldron of dust and glare. Traditional machinery would have faltered under such conditions. Instead, China turned to automation, a new generation of robotic and AI-powered construction tools. Laser-guided bulldozers shaped the land with millimeter precision, mapping each contour in real time. Massive robotic cranes assembled the steel skeleton, their movements controlled by predictive software that adjusted for wind and load. AI-driven drones patrolled the skies above, monitoring worker safety, temperature levels, and material flow across the construction zone. The roof, an architectural spectacle of curves and waves, stretched across 120,000 square meters and weighed over 16,000 tons. 
Each panel was designed like a puzzle piece, fabricated off-site and lifted into place by synchronized cranes, timed to the second. Every step of the process became a demonstration of what 21st century engineering could achieve when human ingenuity worked hand-in-hand -hand with machine precision. The efficiency was staggering, three times faster than conventional construction, and when it was complete, the result was more than architecture. It was sculpture, scale, and science fused into one. A monument to the idea that humanity can build not just on mountains, but with them. Standing behind its undulating roof, you sense the quiet victory of civilization over terrain and the birth of a new kind of city, one that doesn't erase nature, but negotiates with it. Chongqing East isn't just a gateway to China's interior. It's proof that even in a world defined by motion, architecture can still make a stop and look up. When you first step into the main hall, you look up and you stop. The ceiling rises like a cresting wave of steel and glass, a shimmering vault suspended over a world of motion. Natural light cascades down through enormous skylights, refracted through the haze of morning mist that often settles over Chongqing's hills. Below, steel columns. Not simple supports, but sculpted forms modeled after the spreading branches of the Huangzhu tree, the city's ancient emblem reach upward like living things. It feels both futuristic and ancient, both engineered and organic. Every sound, the hum of the escalators, the echo of footsteps, the low murmur of thousands of travelers, rolls up into the great canopy, giving this space the resonance of a cathedral built not for prayer, but for movement. But behind this beauty is an idea, a distinctly modern Chinese concept, station city integration. Instead of treating the railway station as a boundary between journeys and destinations, the planners designed it as an anchor for urban life. Around it rises an entire district that breathes in sync with the trains. Glass office towers lean toward the tracks. Hotels rise just steps from the concourse. Apartment buildings cluster close, their balconies catching the sound of departing trains like distant thunder. Shops, parks, walkways, everything within reach. It is not a transit point, it is a living organism. The new district covers 3.47 square kilometers, forming what the designers call a city cell, a node that expands outward, replicating the logic of biological growth. In most places, you arrive at a station. Here, you arrive in one. This is ambition made physical. The architecture of a nation building not for today's needs, but for tomorrow's scale. To understand the power of Chongqing East, you have to see it on a map. It sits at the intersection of lines that spread like arteries through the body of a continent. From this single terminal, trains pulse toward every horizon, north to Beijing's political heart, east to Shanghai's glittering coast, south to Shenzhen's digital frontier, west toward Chengdu, the gateway to Tibet and beyond. It connects to the Chongqing Jiamen High Speed Corridor the Shangqing Wanzhou Line, and a web of other national routes that pull the deep interior of China closer to the sea. Journeys that once took a day now take hours. Distances that felt like borders now feel like commutes. For the first time in history, the mountain city once described as impossible to reach, impossible to leave, has become a crossroads of the nation. And beneath this grand network, another one grows. Four metro lines, veins beneath the skin. Line 6 is already open. Lines 8, 24, and 27 are being woven into the fabric of the complex. Soon, a traveler will be able to leave their home on the city's farthest edge, descend into the metro, and surface beneath the high-speed platforms without once stepping into the open air. This is not convenience. This is transformation. The architecture connects, but the idea liberates. For Chongqing, Connection is no longer the goal. It's the foundation upon which everything else will be built. Time has always been the true measure of civilization. In Chongqing East, time itself bends. A student leaving for Chengdu no longer wakes before dawn. What was once a five-hour journey through a winding terrain now takes barely over one. A business traveler can have breakfast in Chongqing, negotiate in Jiamen by noon, and return home before sunset. These shifts seem like statistics, but they change how life is lived. Entire routines reorganize themselves around new mobility. Families plan weekends differently. Startups launch in smaller cities knowing clients can arrive in hours. 
even the concept of local begins to stretch. Around the station, the skyline tells the same story. Cranes mark the frontier of a growing district. New apartments, glass-fronted offices, hotels reflecting the tracks below. Above the concourse, cafes and terraces spill into public plazas where children play above the thrum of departing trains. The city, once hemmed in by geography, begins to stretch and breathe. Its center of gravity shifts eastward, pulling development toward this new hub. The past downtowns of brick and neon yield to this new city of glass and motion. Chongqing East is no longer just a place of transit. It's a new kind of nucleus, one that reshapes how people live, work, and imagine the possible. Behind the glass and gleam lies a quieter intelligence, a green one. The station operates under China's top-tier environmental certification, a benchmark usually reserved for experimental eco-campuses or next-generation tech parks. The roof, a shimmering ocean of solar panels, powers lighting, ventilation, and digital systems. Rainwater channels invisibly down through the structure, filtered and repurposed to cool the air and nourish the greenery spread across terraces and pedestrian zones. AI-controlled climate systems adjust in real time, tracking passenger flow to minimize energy use without sacrificing comfort. Daylight floods nearly every corridor, not by accident, but by design. The building's orientation, its reflective materials, and its skylight geometry are all tuned to capture light efficiently. Outside the transit web tightens. Metro lines, bus routes, and electric taxis converge directly under and around the complex. Private cars become optional, even impractical. What emerges is not just sustainability, but symbiosis. The idea that infrastructure can feed and be fed by the urban ecosystem it inhabits. And beyond the engineering lies symbolism. For centuries, China's western interior was defined by its terrain, rugged, remote, unreachable. This station stands as an answer to that history, a physical declaration that geography no longer limits growth. The only barrier now is imagination. Stand beneath that vast roof for a while. Watch the flow of people. Listen to the echo of departures. The station doesn't feel like a building at all. It feels like a living system in motion. This is not the end of a project. It's the beginning of an era. For Chong King, the East Station is a doorway to its next century, a declaration that the future will not arrive quietly, but at 350 kilometers per hour. For China, it's a message written in concrete and light, that infrastructure isn't about concrete or speed alone, but about the flow of life between cities, the invisible current that drives culture, economy, and innovation. Soon, this very station will anchor international trade lines stretching into Southeast Asia, feeding into corridors that run across Central Asia, and meeting European railways at the far edge of the continent. The world's old map centered on coastlines is being rewritten from the mountains inward. And yet, amid its immensity, there's a simple truth pulsing through it all. The same civilization that once raised the Great Wall to protect its borders now builds great gateways to open them. As the last train departs and the station quiets for the night, its lights dim to a soft glow, a heartbeat in steel and glass. The question lingers in that silence. If this is what a train station looks like today, what will a city look like tomorrow? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video with us and catch you in the next one.